GCSE geography, glacial processes and glacial landforms. Glaciers shape the land through processes of erosion, transportation, weathering and deposition. And a couple of them can be seen in this initial diagram. So there are two main types of erosion. The first being abrasion. This is as the glacier moves downhill, the rocks that have been frozen into the base and sides of the glacier scrape against the rock beneath. Now, because the rocks are scraping against the bedrock, which is the rock already on the ground, like sandpaper, it leaves scratches called striations in the land below. The second type of erosion is plucking. This is when rocks become frozen into the bottom and sides of the glacier. As the glacier moves downhill, it plucks the rocks from the land and freezes it into the glacier. Freeze thaw weathering. This is the main type of weathering. During the day, when temperatures are higher, the snow melts and water enters cracks into the rock. When the temperature drops below zero degrees Celsius, the water in the crack then freezes and expands by about 9%. This makes the cracks larger. As this process is repeated through continual thawing and freezing, the cracks get larger over time. Eventually pieces of rock break off. Now if you study coasts, the same thing happens. Glacial erosion produces a range of landforms, which is what we are going to take a look at in the rest of this video. A corrie is an armchair, hollow shaped, shaped hollow, found on the sides of a mountain. This is where a glacier forms. In France, corries are called cirques, and in Wales, they are called swims. So how does a corrie form? Snow collects in a sheltered hollow, which is sort of a, a ditch, on the side of a mountain. This is usually on north-facing slopes in the northern hemisphere. Now the snow doesn't melt in the summer because it's high up, sheltered and very cold. Every winter, more snow collects in the hollow. This becomes compacted and the air is squeezed out, just leaving ice. The back wall of the quarry gets steeper due to freeze thaw weathering and plucking. The base of the quarry becomes deeper due to abrasion. Now as the glacier gets heavier, it moves downhill. The glacier moves out of the hollow in a circular motion called rotational slip. Due to less erosion at the front of the glacier, a corry lip is formed. After the glacier has melted, a lake then forms in this hollow. This is called a corry lake or a tarn. Here are some features of a corry. They produce arets, which are narrow ridges of land that's created when two corries erode back towards each other, and pyramidal peaks when three or more quarries erode back towards each other and at the top of a mountain a pointed peak is left behind. When a glacier moves downhill it erodes everything in its path through abrasion and plucking. Glaciers usually follow the easiest route down a mountain, the path with the least resistance, which is often an old river valley. Interlocking spurs created by a river are eroded at the ends by the glacier to create truncated spurs. After the glacier has melted, it leaves a U-shaped glacial trough. Sometimes the glacial trough fills with water, called a ribbon lake. Old tributaries, which would have once fed into the valley, are then left suspended and are known as hanging valleys. Any material carried or moved by a glacier is called a moraine. There are three different types of moraine. A lateral, which is when material is deposited along both sides of the glacier. A medial, which is when material is deposited in the middle of the glacier. And terminal, when material is deposited at the end of a glacier. 
glacial landforms created by deposition, the name given to all material deposited is either called glacial till or boulder clay. Now, deposited material creates a range of inter interesting features, such as erratics and drumlins. Erratics are rocks that have been deposited by the glacier. They are usually made of a rock type that would not be found in that area. That's why it's given the name erratic, because it's out of place. This suggests that erratics can be carried a long way from an area of different geology. Now, drumlins are, gla are when glaciers move moraine around in unusual ways, producing mounds of deposited moraine. This almost forms a hill, which you can see in the diagram below. They have a steep and sloping side. Now, they can be either small or large, and they're sometimes described as having a basket of eggs topography because of the unusual landscape that they create. Glacial meltwater. Now, eventually the glacier will have to melt and the water carries this fine material which is eventually deposited. All of the material moved by the glacial meltwater is called glacial drift or glacial till. Glacial outwash is the sand and gravel deposited by the running meltwater, leaving just the glacier. Now the material is sorted the heavier particles of sand and gravel are deposited in the glaciated valley, whereas the lighter, finer particles, such as clay, are deposited further away from the glacier and are deposited in the outwash plain. Thank you for watching. If you found this very big video helpful, be sure to subscribe and for more advice, follow me on Instagram at NoWafflejuice.